Today we will discuss the second grade math standard MD8. This standard requires that students solve word problems involving coins and bills. They should also be using the dollar and cent sign appropriately. Before successfully meeting the standard, students must first have a firm grasp of the names of coins and bills as well as their values. Students should already be familiar with pennies and dimes from kindergarten and first grade. Students should also be able to skip count by fives and tens, add and subtract two-digit numbers, and understand basic place value concepts in order to connect the values of coins with tens, fives, and ones and use that knowledge to solve equations. This standard is not simply about recognizing coins or counting a group of coins to determine their value. Students must use what they know about place value to solve word problems involving money. With regards to skip counting, you are going to need to make sure that students can count forward and backward by fives and tens. For example, students must be able to count by fives from a number that is not a multiple of five, such as 6, 11, 16, 21, 26, etc., as well as counting 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Likewise, students must be able to count by tens, such as 13, 20, 30, 30, 30, 40, 30, 50, 30. Students who learn the standard counting by multiples, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, may be just reciting a poem rather than thinking mathematically. Counting off the multiples by 5 and 10, both forward and backward, also leads to proficiency with computation and place value. The interactive number charts from abca.com are excellent for scaffolding this type of counting practice. A question that second grade teachers often ask is, what do we do about decimals? This question is answered on page 22 of the grade level overview. In short, decimals are not used in grade two. Since students are not introduced to decimals until grade four, problems should either have only dollars or only cents. Today we will look at a three act task titled, It All Adds Up. During this task, students will use what they know about the value of coins place value, skip counting, and two-digit addition to determine which coins are placed into a bank to reach a total of $1. The task will begin with a short video of money placing coins into a bank. Students will then discuss what they notice from the video and what they are still wondering. Next, students will be shown an image of the different types of coins that were placed into the bank, and they will also be told that there are 12 coins total. Students will work with a partner or independently to determine possible combinations of coins. The class will then share their strategies before watching the final video and hearing the solution. The task integrates several standards for mathematical practice. For standard one, students are making sense of a problem by determining what information they have and what additional information is needed. Standard four is evident as students are modeling their thinking with images of coins, base 10 rods, and units, etc. on their marker boards while solving the problem. Standard 5 is relevant as students may use tools such as base 10 blocks and 100 charts to provide a concrete representation of their thinking. Finally, Standard 7 is apparent as students are using their understanding of place value and the value of coins to come up with a reasonable solution as they skip count or add two-digit numbers. During this act, you will notice that students will first watch the video of someone placing coins in the bank. Next, the class will come together to share what they notice and what they still wonder. Let's watch the video to see how Act 1 plays out in a second grade classroom. Okay, guys, I'm going to show you a video of someone putting coins into a bank. As you're watching the video, I want, to think of, want you to think about what you notice and I want you to think about what you're wondering, what's happening during the video. Okay. And um, if he put a nickel in at first, 
push and then a dawn to make it a team. Okay, so um, basically just what point, right? What point's at first, what point's for the rest of the time? Um, so if we know that it makes a dollar, but we don't know what point, what's another clue that could help us to decide which coin to use? During Act 2, students will learn that there are 12 coins in the bank made up of dimes, nickels, and quarters. They will work with a partner to use what they know to find a viable solution, and they will share their strategies with the class. Remember, the importance of concrete, pictorial, abstract learning sequence. Some students will need to use concrete materials to represent and add coin amount. If you have foam-based tin blocks, cut them so that students can easily represent nickels and quarters in addition to dimes and pennies. This can also be done with cutting or shading 100 grids on paper. Students may also choose to use 100 charts or open number lines to represent their thinking and model what is happening in the video. Finally, as an abstract representation, making a table of equivalent values provides a great visual for students who may have trouble remembering that there are two nickels and a dime, a nickel and two dimes and a quarter, etc. During Act 2, walk around and guide students with additional questions and suggestions. So we watched the video, we talked about what we noticed and what we were still wondering, and then we looked at the two pictures that told us what types of coins were put in the bank and told us how many coins were put in the bank, and we know that all together it equals what? A dollar. So what you're going to do in just a second is you're going to go to your seat with your partners, and you guys are going to try to decide what 12 coins using dimes, nickels, and quarters could equal a dollar. Now transition to Act 3 by having students come back together as a class to listen to and comment on one another's strategy, to compare and contrast and share why they agree or disagree. As the two students are sharing the following video, notice how they mention making trades, skip counting, and adding up the coins to get the right sum. After allowing several groups to share and discuss, watch the final video to reveal the solution. Have students discuss whether or not they had the same answer and why. First, we did 25. Okay. And then we added um, three nickels. Three nickels? Dimes. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then we added seven nickels. Okay. Great job. You guys ready to see what he did? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what is that? A nickel. A nickel. Yes. So there's one to 15. Huh. So it's telling you what the coins were, and then it's adding it to the total. Greg Tang offers a great game titled Coin Bubble. During the game, students are asked to select coins to make a specific value. As the levels progress, they are also able to make fair trades from pennies to nickels, nickels to dimes, and so on. This is a great way to differentiate. Your beginning students may only get through the first few levels as they are making amounts equal to or less than a dollar with pennies, nickels, and dimes and quarters. They also may choose to use the smaller coins instead of trading them for coins of greater value. Your more experienced students, however, may begin making fair trades based on using not only composition and decomposition, but compensation strategies too. And they will also be making amounts greater than $1. Here is a short video of a student playing the game. Notice how the levels progress as time passes.
Graham Fletcher also has a great resource on his blog to allow students to practice making fair trades. The game is called To the Bank. During the game, students begin with four quarters. As they roll a dice, they are required to put that amount of money in the bank. Students quickly realize that they must either make change or trade their quarters in order to be able to pay smaller amounts. This is a great way to add enrichment. You may also scaffold learning by giving students cut up hundred charts to represent the value of each coin, or you may list fair trades on the board for them to refer to when needed. You could also differentiate for higher learners by changing the amounts for each roll to include dollars and cents. Requiring students to make change in fair trades is a great way to add rigor and enrich daily activities. Using open-ended questions with multiple solutions is also a great way to encourage problem solving and critical thinking skills. Here are some great examples of different questions that you may use to add rigor to daily activities and assessments. Keep in mind these types of questions are for all students, not just gifted and advanced. Take a moment to pause the video and try the first two problems on this slide. As you solve, reflect on the degree of rigor. For further professional learning, please see this outstanding article published in the 1999 edition of Teaching Children Mathematics. We hope that you and your students will have great success with Standard MD8. Don't be afraid to try some of the activities mentioned. Also visit georgiastandards.org for more great resources.